वो सो गई अब छुट्टी माँ जी सो गई अब मैं जाऊ हाथ सजा ले आती तो रखा था कौन सी गोली मार दी थी जो भिन्ना रहे होते थे बापू ने कहा है ना मैं मानो से मीठा बोला है <laughs> मैं जाती कहा जा रही अपने सैया के पास यू माइट बी फेमिलियर विद द आइडिया ऑफ गुड हेयर रिसर्च शोज दैट गुड जीन्स एंड न्यूट्रिशन लीड टू थिक लॉन्ग एंड शाइनी हेयर Evolutionary psychologists believe that people across cultures tend to choose romantic partners with good hair because healthy partners make healthy children. In India, hair has deep cultural and sociological meaning, especially for girls and women. In this video, let's discuss how hair has been used in Indian films and real life. to codify romance. Ancient spiritual texts allude to how the head is the highest part of the body and should be treated with special care. During one's awakened spiritual journey, energy flows up and down the spinal cord activating chakras until it reaches one's head therefore the hair on our head is sacred representing the transition between life stages and our journey toward enlightenment certain spiritual stories involving women have emphasized that hair represents honor and feminine power Hindu goddesses for example have different hairstyles in accordance with their roles Saraswati's hair is simple and neatly placed which is consistent with her role as the source of pure knowledge and music Meanwhile Kali's hair is wild and tangled which makes her look scary but this is consistent with her role as a fierce bloodthirsty warrior meant to kill demons when the demon king javan touched vedvati's hair without her permission she cut off the piece with her hand and said wretched demon what have you done by touching my hair you have violated my entire body now i must die But when I am reborn, I shall be the cause of your destruction. Hear my curse loud and clear. Accordingly, when we see someone yanking on a person's hair with malice, it feels jarring to us because it's like they're being robbed of their personhood. So, if a woman in Bollywood is unhappy, and has disheveled hair she could be channeling vedvati or draupadi these women endured violence and trauma their open hair represents their discontent and suppressed rage similarly another woman might wear her hair down to mourn the loss of a loved one her open hair represents existential sorrow and resistance to resuming normal life in contrast to the violence we just discussed a parent or guru might touch a young person's head to bestow blessings but social customs would deter young indians from touching each other's heads if they were the same age and of the opposite gender given these ancient customs Indian filmmakers have deliberately written scenes involving hair to create romantic tension 
and move relationships forward. Different age groups wear their hair differently. Girls tend to wear their hair loose, but are compelled to tie it higher and tighter as they age. In school, they might wear two braids or a ponytail. In marriage, one braid or half up, half down. In motherhood, a bun. And if they become widows, some women have their hair shorn to make them unattractive to men. Ah, patriarchy. For women especially, hair is an asset, a social currency designed to measure our desirability and economic status. Particularly in the past, Filmmakers have used hairstyles to exhibit a woman's personality and moral fiber. A good woman often had long, tame, and straight hair. She was principled, but innocent, naive, and inexperienced in love. A bad, scheming, and villainous woman had short, modern hair. She was superficial snobby and coarse in her relationships. Or she was one of the boys and not considered a serious love interest. If she was older and her bun was meticulously neat, she was also defeminized, an iron lady that enforced patriarchal values on her fellow women. A dangerous, vampy woman had modern, wavy, and sometimes blonde hair. She was confident, aggressive, and hungry for love, and therefore unhinged. Like Upsetas, these femme fatales seduced and corrupted men with their worldliness and westernized hair. She was a cautionary tale meant to contrast with the good woman, who was the marrying kind. This contention between the good versus wild woman is especially prevalent in films that feature a love triangle between one man and two women. Filmmakers typically style the two women's hair differently to reflect their contrasting personalities and suitability for the man in question. In the film Mutse Dosti Karoge, Tina's hair changes throughout the film, which is consistent with her restless nature. Even as an adult, she styles it in juvenile ways, like braids and pigtails, which reflects how she's still emotionally young. In contrast, Uja's hair changes much less, which reflects the fact that she's dependable and clear about who she is. While Tina regularly curls and straightens her hair, Uja tends to choose more practical styles, like a ponytail or simply brushing it out. While Tina's hair contains blondish highlights, Uja's hair is a darker brown with reddish highlights, which makes her look more traditionally Indian. When Raj talks to Uja about his doubts about love and life, Uja's hair is sweet and simple. It's symmetrical, indicating that she's level-headed, and her advice is probably right. Raj's hair and overall style are fresh and simple as well, which reveals how he's more compatible with Uja than he is with Tina. It's crazy how costumes can reveal how filmmakers judge women. This moral policing through hair is ridiculous and insulting, but it's interesting. Hopefully, in the future, we'll see even more diversity in hairstyles for women in Bollywood. Finally, Bollywood lyrics that extol a woman's beauty 
might compare her hair to reams of silk or a loyal shadow. Through the lens of beauty, she is perceived as an otherworldly being that mystifies and protects. When her hair flows in the breeze, she's an independent spirit, a flickering flame, a ghost. When the wind is still, her hair can represent the night sky and her face the moon. Her eyes are the windows to the world and her hair is a shelter, a nest. Her lover becomes childlike as they gaze into her cosmic eyes and find respite in her dark hair. In Indian films, hair is a tool for communicating romantic interest. When they first meet and court each other, boys might slick back their hair, and girls twist or fuss with their hair to calm their nerves. Women might apply perfume or itta throughout their hair to encourage a love interest to come closer. Young people might playfully tug, ruffle, or stroke each other's hair to show affection without being too obvious. These gestures are like a shared secret that they use to recognize each other. In some parts of South Asia, wearing one's hair loose is akin to being half-dressed. Women typically keep their hair loose when they're doing something for themselves like bathing, dressing, or sleeping. If a love interest sees a woman's hair loose, they might feel included in her private world. That might be why a gajra feels like an intimate gift. Of course, a woman will put it in her hair, but it provides an opportunity for her love interest to help her. To summarize, dressing or adorning hair provides an excuse for two people to stay near each other. By closing physical gaps in this private environment, they can connect emotionally. Finally, when women in films wear their hair down, it can sometimes indicate their desire to be touched. Filmmakers might use the goddess Gali as inspiration when they portray young women with sensual desire. Desire has always been a tricky subject with Indians because it makes us uncomfortable, but especially so when women express it. So, when women are portrayed as having desire, they often exhibit animalistic features like baby bird eyes, a tiger's walk, or a lion's mane of hair. Her hair is loose and wild, and her eyes contain fire. She's possessed by a rabid curiosity that's frightening but alluring. As we can see, hair is so much more than a part of the body. Hair is a tool for self-expression and exploration as we grow up, as well as a means for expressing complex feelings. Every aspect of Indian life is replete with meaning, and filmmakers use objects like hair to amplify emotions and add nuance to character dynamics. What are some of your favorite hairstyles in Bollywood films? 
There are so many great looks out there. Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.